All right, uh, go ahead and get going here. Um, so yeah, I, I talked about the um, current assignment last time a bit, and, and I recorded stuff as usual, but um, looks like the audio wasn't too good. Uh, but yeah, I was planning on kind of going over that, uh, repeating a bit of that. Um, although, yeah, uh, well, I'm gonna go over the um, problem set four first here, just kind of review it. Um, that was just returned. So let's see. Don't have too much to say about this, but uh, I'll see if anybody had any questions. Um, um, so for the first one, um, this wasn't meant to be too difficult, but um, you know, so I know some people don't quite have in mind uh, what you're supposed to picture for things like this. So, so you do have to picture this as a list of free blocks, right? So, so some people I think were making uh, the, the first question a little bit tougher than than they needed to, right? So if you if you simply have a list of the free blocks, however you maintain. It could be a, a, a linked list. So, so, so a list of, of, of items that are linked together. Um, could be an array, just an array of, of, of things that have structures of, you know, that, that indicate like the, the start and the stop of the free block in memory, right? So for all these, I mean, you basically have to search for that. So, so the idea is you have to know kind of what the best fit, first fit, next fit does for, um, uh, this dynamic partitioning. Right? I talked a little bit about dynamic partitioning last time and, and uh, memory partitioning. So dynamic partitioning is an older, uh, an original sort of memory management um, uh, mechanism. So, so, you know, the first kinds of operating systems use dynamic partition. So it's pretty simple, but um, from dynamic partitioning, um, the basics of that, uh, whether you used um, 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 so, so whether you've allocated blocks um, just to be the size that you need, which is what we're talking about here, that's that's similar to segmentation systems um, as they're called in modern systems with a few modifications. Or there are there's variations of, of dynamic partitioning that our textbook talked about um, that had fixed size blocks, which is basically paging systems. So, so that evolved into what we call paging. So anyway, but but for, for segmentation systems or for dynamic partitioning, the problem is, is that you've got holes in memory um, that aren't currently allocated. So whenever you have a new allocation, you have to pick one of those to um, uh, one of those unused portions of memory, one of those unused holes um, to fulfill the request that comes in. So, so our textbook talked about best fit, first fit, next fit. So for all of these, it's really just a search. You have to search through all of the, um, um, so, so you're given in the problem that um, um, you have N free blocks on the free block list, right? So for best fit, this is gonna be the worst performer. So, so the name um, uh, uh, doesn't refer to the performance. It refers to how it works. So for best bit, you have to find the free block among the in free blocks that's the closest in size, that, that's, that's either equal or bigger, but, but the closest in size to the request that you're making, right? So there's, there's nothing you can do except for check every one of these. So, so if I have 10 free blocks, I have to check the size of all 10 of those to see which one is closest in size. And, and closest here means it, it has to be big enough. So, so anything that's too small gets rejected immediately. So you can't use something that's too small to fill a request that doesn't have a, a big enough hole. Um, but if it's exactly equal or larger, you can consider it. And among the in free blocks, um, you want the one that's, that's closest, exactly equal or, or um, uh, the closest one, but that's bigger than the request. Right? So that means it's, it's this is really big O of n. Uh, actually, these are all big O of n, but uh, but but for this one, if I've got ten thousand free blocks, I have to search all ten thousand of them. 
and, and you can't, you're going to always, the, 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 the minimum, maximum, and average is to search all in. Uh, but first fit and next fit are, are fundamentally different. So basically those, you just search until you find a suitable candidate um, and, and they both work the same way. So um, so, um, um, so for first bit, first fit, the, the easiest. So you just start at like the top memory or you start at the first node in your linked list. And um, you um, stop as soon as you find a suitable one, right? So, you know, as we discuss here, so you could get lucky. I mean, the very first one could be suitable or, or you might end up having to search all in of them. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a probabilistic thing. So it, it'll depend on kind of the typical relationship between how big the blocks are in the free list versus how big um, the, the memory request that you have in there. But, but basically under kind of um, common assumptions, it, it would usually, you probably have to search about half, um, you know, um, given an average size block and given that um, um, uh, the, the free holes are of some average size. Um, so, so, so usually it'll be about N over two. So once you've searched about half of the free blocks, you'll find the one that you're looking for. Um, and there's no real performance that I can think of a difference between first fit and next fit. So the, the same arguments apply. So the textbook talks a little bit about um, that the, there can be some performance implications um, uh, under most simulations, first fit and next fit end up having about the same performance. So, um, so, so, so the difference being, so for next fit, you just kind of remember the, the place where you stopped searching last time and you search from there. So, so if you're thinking of, of your free block list as a linked list, you're gonna have to have some way, like, like the, the linked list might be actually linked together in a circle so that, um, you know, so you can keep going all the way around until you've searched all the items or, or however you do it. Um, so I don't know, I mean, half or two thirds of the people had that basically, and, and other people were doing something a little bit more, make it a little bit more complex, I think, than that, what they should have. So. Um, so I had these on the numbers on the um, um, paging system um, question. So in this question, you know, what we're talking about uh, 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 paging uh, memory management. So we've got uh, pages of fixed size that's given to you as two to 10 bytes. Um, and we've got a certain amount of physical memory. Um, so a logical address has to be, so a logical address has to have the, the page number so you have to have 16 bits to specify the, the page number. So that's going to you plus an offset. So you really need 26 bits. So that's the first one. Um, bytes in a frame is, um, you know, that's the number of things that you can, um, that you can um, address on a page. So a frame or a page are going to be um, equivalent on a paging system. So you have two to the 10 or 1,024, one kilobyte. Um, in a frame, basically. Um, so if you have a 32-bit memory, 10 bits are for the offset, so that the, 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 uh, the remaining bits are going to specify the frame number uh, in physical memory. So you have 22, so you can compare that to the the, the, the two to 16 pages of logical address space. Um, it's, it's typical in, in paging systems that this is kind of reverse. So, so that's one thing about this question, it's a little bit off. So, so normally your, vir your virtual address space will be kind of bigger than your kind of physical uh, address space, but um, that's the numbers that we had here. Um, so if you did the readings, um, for you know this unit for previous week and this week, 
And so we are in the second week of our three weeks for our memory management unit here. So hopefully everybody's gotten through and read the, the two chapters seven and eight now. Um, The, uh, every process that's running is going to have a its its own page table, and you have to have one page for every um, uh, um, you know for your whatever is defined as your logical address space. So right, if we have ten to six pages in the logical address space, um, we have to have one page table entry for every one of those potential pages to keep track of whether that page is currently um, in memory, which, which you know, the mapping between the, the, the logical page number and the physical frame number, um, or the, you know, that page is not currently loaded. Um, so so anyway, that, that needs to be equivalent to, to the 16 again. Um, so yeah, in this case, I mean, you know, the, the, the mapping from a, a page number to a frame number means that we need to have those 22 bits that, like we talked about on question three here to specify the frame number, plus there might be extra bits. So I accepted answers like 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, depending on other things that you might mention. You know, so uh, typically you're gonna have like a, a dirty bit. So whether the, the page is modified or not, um, Um, oh, well, valid, invalid, uh, so that can be slightly different from uh, dirty or not dirty. So, so dirty, not dirty is whether it's been read, written to, or not written to, wherever it is, either logical or in a physical frame. Valid or invalid is, you know, uh, it's, it's currently in a, a physical frame or it's not, um, so it's still in a virtual address space. And there's actually a lot more bits, um, if you read our textbook about that, the, you know, a lot more information that's going to be in the page table besides those. Um, so for the third one, the, the fundamental insights that a lot of people had, um, although a lot of people, you know, you know, I mean, obviously getting this from some other source rather than thinking about them themselves. So incorrectly identifying that, um, uh, you know, it's when J is three on the outer loop for, for the first uh, answer here. But, you know, the basic problem is, is that um, if, if, if pages are laid out like this, you know, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 63. So, so the, the row number, um, um, so, so all the values for row zero are together and then followed by row one, followed by row two. Um, the, the problem with, with this is, is, so I is the row number. So, so once you access row zero, one, two, I mean, those, those will all be um, in the same page. Um, but you know, you're basically accessing the, the values in row uh, uh, zero, um, column zero, but then in row uh, one. So, so when you go to uh, I is one, you skip over all these values um, and you go to the value at one, column zero, right? So, so, so even though you have all these values in the same page, you're only using a few of the values on a particular page, given the layout as is described here, right? So, and, and basically once you get up to, um, um, when, when I is, um, uh, you know, zero, one, two, um, so, so you can actually get uh, four columns. So, so, so zero, one, two, three will uh, uh, be able to be addressed on the first page that's loaded from either any of these arrays. But once once I gets to three, that's gonna be on a different page than, than the values uh, on the row zero, one, uh, two, uh, when, it, when it gets to four. So, so the, the row zero, one, two, three will be on one page, the rows four, five, six, seven, um, I'll be on the next page and, and so on, right? So that, that means that basically uh, every time um, every fourth iteration through the inner loop, the way it's specified here, you'll end up having a page fault and, and you're gonna be doing some redundant work, reloading pages a lot. So if you work that out, you're actually gonna have um, 3,072 total page faults um, occur. Um, 
um, because you know th this inner loop happens 64 times, but every fourth time um, you have the page faults. So, so 16 times page faults are, are occurring. And there's three page faults that have to occur. So there's 48 page faults uh, uh, every time, and that happens time 64. Um, is where this number comes from. So the 64 for the number of outer iterations on the outer loop. Um, so really, I mean, this was meant to be kind of a hint, um, but uh, if you just access it, um, put, put the, uh, swap the order of these loops here, um, so in that case, what happens is that uh, you're then iterating through the column. So you, you get all the columns, you know, all, all the, the, the columns uh, zero through 63. So, so J is the second in index, which is, rep which is accessing the column. That's all gonna be on, on the page. So um, um, you'll be able to get all the way through the inner loop um, um, for, uh, you know, so when, when I is zero, if you swap these, that, that would be for row zero, you'd be able to have all those values on the same page and all the values for row one, two, and three, since that's the amount of information you, get, you can get onto these uh, pages in this question here, right? So by swapping those, you actually only end up with a, uh, the three page faults every fourth iteration of the outer loop. So that drastically reduces uh, the, um, the number of page faults and, and page faults are expensive. So, you know, that, that's kind of one of the whole points of the, the memory management. You want to reduce uh, the, the necessity of getting data back and forth from secondary storage, um, you know, which is your, your uh, hard drives usually um, into memory, right? And so page faults require that, require a load from a hard drive um, of a page into a physical frame. Right. So, um, when um, when you can find ways to reduce that, that's kind of uh, um, um, what you need to do. So, um, all right. Now I won't, I won't go step through steps to the last one. I kind of want to get to the assignment here. Uh, talk about it again some more. But um, um, so this is what I had for the um, LRU and FIFO. So they look pretty similar, but 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 uh, really um, about by the I think it's this frame here. Of course, there's there's a difference so um, between LRU and FIFO. So one zero seven two seven six zero two seven. So like in this case. Um, for least recently used, you have to, you know, look back through history. So when we have the page fault of six, uh, we, we've currently got one zero two seven. So you have to look back um, and, and see that zero was least recently used. So you need to kick that out, right? Whereas for FIFO, you're just treating it as a circular buffer. So um, here at this point, um, I, you know, did my initial page placement. So I've gotten one zero two and seven with a few hits here. So I'm going to add this page fault. That's the first time where we need to make a replacement decision. So the, the, the frame pointer should be back to the first frame. So we kick out page one and get page six. Um, yeah, and, and I came up, yeah, so again, you know, I mentioned this for, for the, the, the people that, that saw the video before uh, this was due, that um, it, it's probably most correct if I ask you know, if, if you need to do a hit ratio or a fault ratio to only consider when the replacement decisions were made because the initial page placements, so for both of these, up to the point when memory was full, so up to the first uh, six references here, those were really just page placements. So you're not gonna be using a replacement decision algorithm to do that. You know, so if I have a free page, I can just, uh, uh, and, and I need to load a new page's memory, I can just take any free page and load it in. Um, so as our textbook does, we're essentially just using uh, a, a FIFO for the page placements as well. Um, uh, just keep track of the next free um, uh, frame and um, load it in there. So. But um, yeah, so if you want to know the, the, the performance of the replacement algorithms, it's really only fair to look at um, its performance when replacements were done. Right. So it's a really the, the after the initial 
page placements, there was 28 page references um, uh, where you had to make replacement decisions for the five part of the LRU. Um, and among those, for both of these, um, 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 I actually had, I asked for the hit ratio, you know, so if I ask for a hit ratio, you should give me the hit ratio so that the, the ratio of the hits to the total references. Um, so I had 15 hits um, or 13 faults uh, among the 28 here. So it comes up with the hit ratio of 15, for both of these, right? Um, um, I should probably fix, I should probably uh, use a different sequence here so these differ. Um, so. If you do consider the initial page placements, you really should consider the, the faults and the hits as well, right? So you shouldn't just ignore that um, um, these page placements are really page faults, right? So, so, so if you add those in, uh, we had an additional, you know, six, uh, additional four faults or additional two hits among the um, initial, um, among the full 34 here. So you, you come up with a ratio of exactly 0.5 hits uh, if you consider those uh, two hits among the initial placements. Um, yeah, and, and you know, uh, in this case, you do get uh, equal performance in terms of page faults or page hits. Um, that's not necessarily typical. So, you know, uh, the FIFO is, um, in the long run is not gonna be as good of a performer as least recently used by quite a long shot. LRU will be a much better at performance, but for a particular sequence, you're not, you know, it's not um, uh, strange that, that, you, that you might get equal or it could even be that you can construct a sequence where FIFO actually happens to do a bit better than LRU so, um, in kind of perverse cases. But for, for you know, for, for random references um, over long run, I mean, LRU will outperform FIFO every time. So that's helping people talk a little bit about that on the third one, uh, besides just saying that they were equal, you know. So, um, all right, yeah, so that was it on that. Any questions on that? Any problems that questions? Um, so I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about the assignment four here. I'm going to go back over some of the stuff that I talked about um, uh, last Thursday. I started on a little bit last Thursday. Uh, I know that kind of the recording was bad. Uh, the audio was bad. Hopefully my microphone working in here, but um, up here. With the assignment five, uh, we're going to be implementing the uh, page replacement um, algorithms, right? So we have a simulation to do page replacement. Um, so I want to talk a little bit again about the structure of it. So we're using an object oriented uh, design for this simulation. So it's a little bit more complex than like the previous um, simulations uh, in terms of the, the, the structure of the uh, files in the simulation. Um, open up from last time, let me close these all off. So, I mean, as usual, when you're first starting these things, I uh, encourage people to you know, make certain that everything tests and compiles before you start writing code and always keep um, things in a, in a compilable uh, and testable state. So, um, so, um, Just reopen the folder all the way at the beginning here. So, assignment four. Right. 
try to compile and then um, make sure the tests are running. So, you know, as usual for all the assignments, the, 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 the initial code that I give you should be compiling and running when you start off. Um, the, the, the tests won't all be passing, but, but it will compile and run the tests. Um, Yeah, let me bring up the assignment description here. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're making a, a simulation of paid, doing page replacement uh, here. So the same kind of stuff that you do by hand for um, Problem set four. Um, oh, and, and by the way, you know, make certain. So even though on this problem set you didn't have to do optimal or clock, make certain you can do those too. So you might see those on the um, um, the test for unit four. Probably will. Um, so th there's really kind of the the, the tasks are sort of broken up into two things. So, so the, the first set of tasks are kind of the usual where the, there's some functions left um, unimplemented in the basic simulation that you have to, to get working first. Um, so, so basically a few getter and setter methods to, to get going and then um, some things that actually do the, 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 the generic uh, page replacement, um, you know, so um, uh, determine if the reference is a hit or a miss is one of the functions. Um, and um, uh, uh, do the initial placements. Um, so, and, and so on. So I'll talk about those here and, and on Thursday as well. Um, so let me just describe the the architecture of this so, so that people better understand make sure that people better understand it. Um, so if you look in here um, at our source files, um, there's quite a few. So there's um, um, there's a bunch of them named something, you know, X page replacement scheme. So we've got a clock page replacement, FIFO page replacement, um, 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 I guess just those two. And, and then there's, there's one, just a page replacement scheme without a particular one at the front there. Okay. So these all form um, an object-oriented hierarchy. So let me come back to those. I'll talk about those in a little bit more detail. Um, but basically what we're doing, if, if, um, so the, the first set of tasks, you're gonna be implementing stuff in the paging system. Uh, so the paging system got CPP files where most of your code um, for those first uh, four tasks go, or first five tasks. Um, so this is, is similar to the um, simulations that we've done in the past. So this is a, a, um, a class called paging system that implements a paging system simulator. Um, so let's look at the header file. Um, so, you know, it's got a basic method run simulation, which is the hook into, so we can actually run simulations from a command as a command line tool. Plus it has these others, including some of the things that you have to implement, like is page hit. Uh, so, so some of these are already done for you, like load page stream and, and, and some of these um, uh, we have to implement, like I think some of these getter methods, get memory size, things like that. But one thing to note here is that the, the paging system, the, the simulator doesn't actually implement the page replacement policies, okay? So this is an example of, if you look closely um, in the paging system, um, there's a member variable called scheme, which is a type page replacement scheme, okay? So whenever a page repla replacement decision has to be made, um, we don't hard code that in the um, simulation itself we instantiate a particular instance of a page replacement scheme, okay? So, so this hook here allows us to instantiate a particular scheme. So if we wanted to do a clock page replacement, we would implement a, a clock page replacement scheme, or we would instantiate a clock page replacement scheme, and that would be the scheme that we use, right? If we want to implement FIFO, we would, um, uh, we would create an instance of one of these FIFO page replacement schemes and so on, right? 
Um, um, we do that so that we can gen generically implement the parts of page replacement simulation uh, in our paging system class. And then we can leave the details up to the differences for um, different replacement policies um, uh, you know, to encapsulate those in their own class. Okay, this is, this is a common pattern. So, so we're using the scheme uh, in our simulation. Uh, so, so we call the scheme whenever we need to make a replacement decision, basically. And, and so the, 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 the page replacement scheme, um, if I can bring that up. So for example, if we look at page replacement scheme.hpp, we're using object oriented design here. So the page replacement scheme is not meant to be uh, a class that you use on its own. This is an example of an abstract based class, right? So page replacement scheme is the base of a hierarchy of classes that we derive or inherit from it. Uh, so this really just defines an interface, right? So, so it's for something to be a page replacement scheme, we have to be able to implement methods to reset the scheme, uh, to be able to call it when a page hit occurs, um, uh, to get the scheme status, and most important, to make replacement decisions. So this is really the, the main one that the simulation uses. So whenever it needs to make a replacement decision, it calls the make replacement decision function on some particular page replacement scheme instance that, that we create. Right? Um, and the simulation uses these others as well. So we'll, we'll come back to these. But um, so yeah, for this assignment, the second part of TAS, you're going to be implementing the, the clock page replacement scheme. So you're given the FIFO page replacement scheme. So it's actually already working. Um, and you're going to implement um, the, 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 the clock, so some of the methods of the, the clock page replacement scheme. I actually you have to implement all these. Um, but um, these are all going to be pretty similar to FIFO um, uh, with, a, with a few modifications in order to get the clock to work. So, um, so we'll come back to that, but, but um, kind of to finish this off on this, for example, um, so this is just an abstract base class. So, so the in, in C++, this virtual just means that these are virtual functions. So these aren't actually implemented. So, so like if you look at page replacement scheme that, that um, CPP, it implements a constructor and a destructor, but it doesn't implement anything else, right? Um, so these just mean, the virtual just means that if you inherit from this class, so if you make a, a concrete, implementation of a page replacement scheme, you have to implement these virtual methods to become concrete, to become an actual class that you can use um, as a page replacement scheme. So, you know, like I said, you, you're not gonna have to do anything in FIFO. So, so FIFO, if you look at it, inherits publicly from the page replacement scheme. So, so if you look at the FIFO page replacement scheme um, .hpp, uh, it inherits from the base class page replacement scheme. Um, and it's got the reset scheme, the page hit, get scheme status and make replacement. But these aren't virtual anymore because these are concrete implementations. And, you know, um, if you look at um, FIFO page replacement scheme.cpp, um, you'll see the implementations of these again. So we don't have to really do anything for a page hit for, for FIFO, you'll see, so that's an empty function. Um, but we've got an implementation of scheme, get scheme status, I'll come back to. Um, and the make replacement decision I can talk about real quickly here. So for FIFO, remember, all you do is you keep a, a frame pointer uh, to the next frame. And if, whenever you make a, a replacement decision, you just return, you use the frame number that the frame pointer um, is pointed to. And that's going to be the frame that you select to kick out the current page and replace it with the new page here, right? So for our implementation for the FIFO replacement scheme, if I go back to the header file, you'll see that there's one member variable, which is the frame pointer, which just is an integer, right? Um, so we initialize that. If you look in the constructor then, if we wanna start at frame zero, we need to initialize the frame pointer to be zero. So in our constructor for the FIFO, we just initialize the frame pointer to be zero. Here. And then when we make our replacement decision, uh, whatever the frame pointer is pointing to, so here we just remember that frame to replace and we return that. So if frame pointer is pointing to zero, we're going to return, return zero as the frame to be selected to kick out its current page um, and replace it with the next one. Uh, but, you know, in order to 
for FIFO to work, we have to increment that frame pointer so that next time we're asked to make a replacement decision, we, we, we replace the next physical frame. So, um, so here we have to treat the FIFO as a circular buffer, um, as you should have, you know, read about and done for our problem set four question, right? So basically we, we here, we're just incrementing frame pointer by one, but if the frame pointer goes off, you know, the, 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 the end of the memory size by doing a mod here, um, it will return it back to zero, right? So, so if, if we increment it and we go past the end of memory, doing the modulus arithmetic, we'll return it back to zero. So we wrap back around the buffer um, and, and continue on from there. All right, so that's what, what the FIFO is doing. And I'll come back to this. Um, so, you know, you're, the, the, the clock page replacement you're supposed to implement, if you remember, is similar to FIFO. So it uses a frame pointer, but the, the, the main difference for the replacement decision is you don't just select the page that the frame pointer is pointing to, you first do a search. So you first try to find a frame whose use bit um, is not set, whose use bit is zero. So once you find a frame you've used bit of zero, that's the frame you return when you're doing clock page replacement. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's um, but let's go back to um, um, let's let's get started on the actual uh, first tasks here. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and you know like like maybe. Do one of these, um, although maybe at this point, hopefully most people kind of have the, the basic idea. So, so you are supposed to implement a couple of getter methods to begin with, like get memory size uh, in the, so, so we're, uh, these first four tasks are working, uh, implementing some things that are missing in the paging system. So, so that's, that's the basic simulation for doing um, our, our page replacement. Um, so like get memory size, Look at that. Um, so, you know, all these getter methods probably already have, I believe, um, you know, member variables that should have the information that you need to return. So, get memory size should be just returning the, the physical memory uh, of size of the, of the simulation that we're doing. Um, you know, for a page stream, we think of it as you know a, a time going. So so at time zero, I think we start at time zero. That's going to be our first page reference, and then the next page reference happens um, um, at at time one, and, and so on. Right. So we've got an idea of a system time that we keep track of in the um, system time variable, um, and get number of page references is supposed to be. Um, the, the total number of, of references, right? So like in assignment, uh, in our problem set, the, the problem four that I gave you had, uh, what, 34 page references. So that was the number of references where the first six ended up being initial placements and the last 28 were um, where replacements had to happen. So. Uh, but that's all number of page references uh, uh, should hold. So if you look at the... Um, um, tests here, which I, I haven't opened up yet. The one thing um, uh, for a, uh, a simulation of our uh, paging system here, um, we've got really just kind of one meta parameter, one value, which is the, the physical uh, size of memory that we want to simulate, right? So when you create one of these paging system simulations, uh, the one and only thing you specify when you construct one is what the physical memory size is. So, so like on this test, we're using a uh, physical memory size of five. That, that, that's what the get memory size is here, right? So that corresponds to, maybe I shouldn't have opened, um, oh, I still have it, uh, no. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have closed back off, but, but that, that corresponds to, um, the um, the number of physical frames that you have, right? So for um, our textbook examples, they were using like three frames. Uh, for the problem set, problems that everybody should have just completed, uh, I actually had you use four physical frames, right? 
So, so that, that's just a parameter. That, that's just kind of the, the, the size of the memory that we're using in our simulation, right? So in here, when we're testing, we're using five physical frames. So, um, so, so these, these three, you know, are, are meant to be relatively straightforward. So if we look at our paging system, we should be able to find those. Close off some of these page replacement. There it is, paging system messy could be. So, um, so you know, get memory size is, is probably currently failing when we run our tests. Um, to go back looking at our first test um, because we're just returning one, right? Um, and it's expecting it to be five, right? So, so if you look at these same four tests, uh, line 30 here is failing, you know, because the memory size should be five. That's what we specified when we constructed it. So, um, you know, so yeah, I mean, all, all these first three should be relatively quick, right? So if you just return the, the actual value, so, so get memory size should be being maintained. So when you construct, you know, if you go back and look at the constructor, um, so we've got the constructor where you pass in the memory size um, and the scheme type. Um, um, oh yeah, uh, um, if people are curious here, um, so if you, if you look closely, um, our constructor, besides the default constructor that doesn't take any parameters, um, so, so if you look at the test, it looks like we're, we're only passing in the memory size, right? Um, we are actually using um, a, a default second parameter. So, so you yeah, know, this is a feature of most programming languages. When you specify parameters, uh, often you can specify um, a default value for a parameter. And if, if when you call that function, like we're calling the constructor here, if you don't specify the, that parameter, um, so in this case, C++ does this positionally. So if you don't give a second parameter, like uh, what the, the paging scheme is that you want to use for the simulation here, so I could have specified FIFO or clock or whatever for my page replacement scheme that we're going to use in the simulation. Right? If you don't specify that uh, because of our um, uh, default, it will use FIFO. Yeah. So that, that's what's happening here. So all the tests use FIFO because there's no other um, concrete implementation of a paging scheme done yet. So there's only FIFO. So, so all the tests are using the, the FIFO uh, paging scheme by default. Um, so yeah, you know, we set the memory size to five um, that we pass in in the constructor. Um, there's there's an array called memory that we dynamically allocate. Um, that hold uh, page numbers, um, uh, basically integers to keep track of which page is in each physical frame of memory. Um, and the rest of these things will be initialized when the, the, the simulation file is loaded. Um, maybe I, I kind of skipped over that. I maybe should have at least shown one of those. So, the, so these, the, 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 um, the page ref simulation file is actually uh, simpler than some of our previous simulations. So it's really just a, a, a plain text file where each line contains a page reference. Although the first line is the number of references, okay? So I believe like the page reference stream one is the same as the examples used in our textbook uh, in chapter eight, right? Um, so, you know, we've, uh, uh, there, there's 12. So the number of page references will be 12 in this case, but the first reference at time zero is to page two, and then we have reference to page three and then so on, right? So that's that's all this that's in these uh, sim simulation files for this assignment here. Um, all right, anyway, get, to get back to the task. So yeah, if we return, I don't know why it's, um, oh, um, 
if we return the memory size, um, we ought to be able to pass our, our at least that one test for this getter, right? So. So, um, so yeah, now if, if you're returning the correct memory size, then um, we're not failing, not till line 33 now. So, so um, although you do have to implement the get system time, the get number of page references, um, because after you load, well, the, the, the um, system time, of course, starts at zero. So if the, I think the default sub function is just returning zero. Um, but, you know, um, um, it will change as you simulate some stuff. And likewise, the, the number of page references is going to depend. And so after you load a um, page reference stream, so like the one that I showed, uh, the number of page references should be 12 after it gets loaded in there. So, um, anyway, yeah, so that, that um, should get everybody past the first task, I hope. Should be able to get those. Um, so the next function that we need to implement. So this is the, the most, most important decision when you're making a page replacement decision. I think I'm going to bring back up that assignment because I want to. Um, I still have it up. Um, so for example, let, let's go to FIFO, right? So uh, again, after memory is initially full. So, so these are our initial page placements. So here was our first page replacement, page replacement decision we have to make. But but the first thing you do, so, so I have 1027 at time, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let, let's say time starts at zero. So time zero, one, two, three, four, five. So at time five, this is my contents of memory. And then at time six, I have a reference to page six, right? So I have to, the, the, the first question you always ask is, is that a hit or a miss? Is that, is that a hit or a page fault um, you know, in the terminology that we're talking about here, right? So if it's a, if it's a hit, uh, you don't have to do anything. Or, well, um, some algorithms, you do have to do something. But, uh, but for FIFO, we don't have to do anything if it's a hit, right? So here, six is a, a fault because contents of memory is 1027 and six is not in there, okay? So um, the first thing we need to implement is the um, on, on task two is the um, uh, oh I guess I, I skipped over it in that so I'm talking about task three so is page hit um, so let me continue talking about that since I started on we'll come back to the is memory full so um, so for is page hit um, it needs to return true. If, if it's a hit, right? So, so for the example I was just looking at, um, it should be returning false because uh, it's a page fault. So if you have, so if, if you know, the reference is six, the question is, is that a hit? Um, false, it's not a hit. Um, that might be a little bit backwards on the logic there so we could, have, we could have also had a function called is page fault is it a page fault right but uh, but yeah for some reason i had it as is page hit so um anyway so to implement that basically all you have to do so there, there's a uh, an array called page reference um which keeps track of each reference at the system time. So if you know the current system time is six, like I said, you can access this to find out what page is being referenced, which is um, uh, page six uh, in, in the, what I'm stepping through here. So, so um, you know, the page reference at the current system time would tell you that I'm trying to reference page six here, right? Uh, and then the other thing is that you have to search through memory. Okay, so um, um, so I already mentioned it. I kind of went through it probably quickly, but you know, in in the paging system, that's another one of the the local um, 
one of the uh, member variables. So you've got um, a variable called memory, which holds you know the, the simulated memory for the system, right? This is really just going to be an array. So it's a pointer here, but it's going to be an array that's dynamically allocated that holds. A, so if if the system memory size is five, it's going to be an array that can hold five page numbers, right? Um, and if you're confused about page numbers, uh, those are just um, a, a type def. Um, so if you look back up here, a page number is just an unsigned int. So it's really just an integer. You can think of it like that. Right? Um, so that that means that basically, um, you know, if, if my memory size is five, I can look at memory zero to see what page is currently at frame zero, right? And I, I can see if that's equal to the um, the, the page is being referenced, right? So, so if I find it, then it's going to be a hit, right? So for the um, for, for the is page hit, uh, if I look at the reference and I find it in memory, you should return true. It's a, it's a hit. We found it. Uh, but if I look through all of the pages of memory um, and I don't find the, the, the reference, the, the, the current page is being referenced at the current system time, you need to return false. So that, that's all is page hit is doing here. Um, yeah, again, you know, the example I've been using here, um, given, so this is my current contents of memory. So this would be memory zero, memory one, memory two, memory three. So, so yeah, we need to index starting at zero instead of thinking of them as frame one, two, three, four. So this is frame uh, zero, one, two, three. Um, and, and the, the reference at, at the current system time is six. So I need to search, you know, so is six in memory zero, no, six in memory one, no, is six in memory frame two, no, is six in memory frame three, no. So once you search all memory, if you don't find it, then you return false. But like here, when we have a hit, so now we've got memory, our frames are six or two, seven. So is seven in frame zero, no, not in frame one, not frame two, but um, when we come to seven, we find it in frame three. So at that point, we should immediately return true. It's a, it's a hit. So that's what the is page hit is doing. Um, so I skipped over uh, is memory full. Um, so here we, we do, the, the simulation does keep track of and differentiates between the initial page placements uh, and then the replacement. So uh, until memory becomes full, it's just doing a simple page placement, uh, always using FIFO instead of using the, the page replacement scheme to figure out you know, which frame, okay? So, um, so we need uh, another similar method uh, to, that returns a Boolean result of true if the memory is full or false if it's not, right? Um, So this works in a similar way, but uh, but again, memory is going to be initialized to all be empty. So there's a constant called empty frame. Um, so again, if we go back and look at the code, um, um, you, know, you should find all these definitions at the top of the paging system header file. So you know, again, there's there's a definition of empty frame, which is just a, a constant value of zero. We only use page numbers uh, one, two, three, right? So um, um, so we can use zero. So so we never use a negative or or zero as a valid page number in our simulations here. So we use zero as a flag to represent that this frame is currently empty, right? And if you look in the constructor. Um, uh, again, um, at the top here, it should be um, one of the things that it does. Um, is it dynamically allocates the memory according to the, the page size, um, and then it should somewhere initialize um, all of memory. Uh, to have empty frames. Huh, I'm a little bit surprised it didn't. Uh, oh, that probably happens in the reset system here. So let's look at the reset system. So reset system um, gets called on the constructor. 
Um, and, and yeah, that's where we empty out. So, and, and so you can use reset system to, to run another simulation with the same set of memory, basically. So, so yeah, there, there's kind of where, if you track it down, that's where memory gets initialized in all empty frames here. Um, so that means for the is memory full, you have to do kind of a similar thing, just search through all the memory. And if, um, if you ever, ever find a frame that's not the empty frame, you can return um, uh, true, because that means that there's one or more frames that are empty, right? Um, but if, if, you, if you check all frames and, there, and none of them are the empty frame, so if you get through all of those, um, you should return true. Uh, so so uh, memory is uh, full at that point. You know, there, there's something that's, uh, there's, there's an actual page in all of the uh, physical frames of memory, right? So yeah, again, you, you really need, need a loop. The loop will be similar both for um, two and three here. You're gonna be searching through memory for something specific. So you're gonna be searching through memory for empty frames for the is memory full, and you're gonna be searching through memory for a particular page that's being referenced to see if it's currently in memory or not for the um, is page yet. Um, so the final path that you're actually gonna implement is the do page placement, okay? So um, this isn't the replacement. In fact, the, the do, do page replacement has already been done for you. Um, so uh, be, because it's, it, it really, all it does is call the replacement scheme. So let me, let me show that real quickly first here. Um, so for example, if, if you look through the do page replacement in our simulation, so there's both a do page placement that, that you have to implement, but then there's a do page replacement, right? So this should only be called when memory is full. So if I look at whoever calls do page replacement, um, it's, it's checking that memory is full with that function that you uh, implement um, on task two before calling the do page replacement. But anyway, so notice all do page replacement does is it calls the make replacement decision, um, which um, is basically calling make replacement decision on the page replacement scheme to determine which frame number should be replaced, right? So again, all the, the actual decision on which page, which frame um, is selected for replacement is done by the um, uh, page replacement scheme uh, instance the helper object that we have here. Right? So, so to do page replacement is simple in that case, um, although, oh yeah, I mean, we kind of check. Yeah? So, so we, sh we shouldn't call do page replacement uh, if, if memory is not full. So if memory is not full, we throw an exception. But um, if it is full, it is valid then to make a replacement decision. But we, we ask our page replacement scheme to make the replacement decision for us. Uh, and then all we do is we, take the page reference and we stuff that into memory. So that simulates uh, that page being loaded from secondary storage into the physical frame of memory for the frame that was selected for replacement here. Um, so for the do page placement, this should only be called when memory um, has some one or more empty frames, right? So what you have to do for do page placement um, I mean, you could keep a FIFO pointer um, here, uh, but but what I suggested in the algorithm is just do a search again, right? So 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 start searching memory. So first look, you know, is frame zero currently empty? If frame zero is empty, um, uh, replace you know place the current the the, the reference uh, in frame zero. Okay. So to do your placement here, once you find an empty frame, you're going to be doing the same thing here, right? Except for uh, so, so you first have to figure out, so which is the first empty frame? Is it frame zero, one, two, three? So, and once you find it, that frame number that you find is empty, you wanna uh, uh, set it to be the, the, the current reference for whatever the current system time is. That's how you do a page placement, right? Um, so I do ask you to throw an exception. So again, also like this, so if, if memory is full, 
we shouldn't be calling the, the do page placement. So, so first, if memory is full, uh, throw an exception kind of similar to how do page replacement does it. Otherwise, if memory is not full, search, find an empty frame um, and use it for the, you know, the placement that's happening. Um, all right. So yeah, if you understood that, I mean, you know, that um, that gets you through kind of the the, the, the um, all the things that you need to do for the, the basic paging simulation. So let me we'll go into more detail on this on Thursday. Um, but uh, let me again talk, go back and look at kind of these second set of tasks. All right. So again, these if if you kind of understand what you're doing, these shouldn't um, take you too much. So, so it's basically you need to, to uh, modify the FIFO page replacement scheme. So, so the clock is similar to FIFO, just adding a few um, um, extra things. Okay? But, but I do think that um, the, the the clock that we have in there is, is pretty much empty. So, if we look at the, um, um, there are. There is a clock page replacement .hpp. Um, Oh, that, so there's already a frame pointer in there, which you need. Um, and a clock page replacement .cpp. Uh, but yeah, so, so all the functions in the clock page replacement .cpp are just empty uh, initially. Um, although I did start you out with a, a frame pointer. Um, so yeah, you have to implement um, all these these functions for the, the clock page replacement. Um, you can probably leave the, the get scheme status creates a string and returns it. So that will be needed for the system tests, but, but you don't have to implement that um, initially. So you want to concentrate um, um, on the other things. Um, so, so like reset scheme, um, uh, you should just initialize your member variables. Um, so, so again, all of these you can probably look at the FIFO um, and, uh, and and use that as a starting point. So, for for the FIFO's replacement, let's look at FIFO.cpp. Um, look at the reset scheme. Um, all it does is set the frame pointer to zero, right? So you can do the same thing. But um, uh, so for clock. There is one additional thing. So besides the frame pointer, um, you need, because uh, I even had the, the documentation for this, but you need to have an array of the use bits, right? So because every, every frame uh, needs one bit uh, that's gonna be like one or zero. So you could use like an array of integers so, so the, the, the bit is one if the, the frame has been used recently and if it's zero if it hadn't been used recently. Or you use like array of Booleans, use like true to mean that, that the, the use bit has been set and false to mean that it's not set or something like that. Um, so this, this array does need to be dynamically allocated probably because you need to find out um, um, what the size of physical memory is that's being simulated. So, um, so for all of the um, page replacement schemes, you can get a, an access back to the, um, um, the, the simulation object. So again, if you look at, um, this is described in there, but if you look at the, um, um, you need to look at the, uh, the base class for our page replacement schemes here. Um, there's a member variable called sys, uh, which is a pointer back to the, 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 the paging system simulator, right? So for example, if you have this, then you can ask the, 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 the system, the paging system, uh, what the current, you know, you can, you can call get memory size to figure out what the number of physical frames are, which is what, what the information you need to figure out what size of the, um, uh, array is you need to create for your use bits for, for your clock page replacement scheme. Um, uh, 
So there's probably an example of, um, uh, again, if we go back to like FIFO, of some uses of that sys. Let me see if there is. Um, there are some examples of, of using sys um, like in the git scheme status for FIFO, right? So, oh, in fact, the, yeah, I mean, it, it directly uses git memory size, right? So you should be able to do the same thing. So at some place you need to create the use bit arrays for the, for the uh, clock algorithm. Uh, but before you can create the array, you need to find out what the current memory size is. So to do that, you have to ask the, the paging system simulator uh, what the memory size is. That'll get you the memory size. And from that, you can figure out um, dynamically create your array um, that you need. Um, Professor, uh, where exactly are we defining this array? Uh, is it in the heading file or in the implementation file? Um, I mean, you know, you'll have to have it both places. So uh, for the, the clock page replacement, um, I mean, you'll have to define a member variable to hold it. And since you need to uh, allocate this dynamically, it needs to be a pointer to you know, ints or, or booleans or something, whatever you're using for your use bits. And then at the appropriate place, um, um, like the uh, constructor um, or, or somewhere, um, you'll need to allocate that for the correct size for the current um, um, system uh, frame size or memory size. Does that make sense? So you mean uh, we have to have uh, both the pointer and then the array uh, in the heading file. So for example, you know, if you're not following what I'm saying, uh, for example, the, the same thing happens for um, the actual memory in the um, 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 in the paging system here. I have to make tabs open. So, um, so for example, uh, if we look at paging system, uh, there's an array called memory. Um, which shows up as a member variable um, as a pointer, right? So it's a pointer to page numbers. And again, remember, page numbers are just integers, right? So we're using integers for our page numbers. It's, it's a pointer to that. But, but we dynamically allocate memory. So if you look at the paging system.cpp, I already showed that, um, but um, uh, like in the constructor, um, uh, we dynamically allocate the array memory uh, using the new, right? So that this creates an array of, if memory size is five, this creates an array of five page numbers. And then after that, you can use memory like a normal array after you dynamically allocate it, right? So, so you can access, um, oops. Um, and, and there's examples of this down in there, but so even though it's a pointer, um, um, I mean, you know, after you dynamically allocate a block of integers in this case, I mean, it, it's an array then. So you, so you can access it using array indexing. All right. Oh, yeah. Makes sense now. Okay. So, yeah. So you're doing similar things like that for the use bits um, for the clock. Um, and uh, yeah, I need, I need to wrap up. So, one final thing. Like I said, we, we can talk more details on this on Thursday as well. So some, some hints about, so the, the big thing is doing the make replacement decision. I already touched on this. So given that you have your use bits, um, your make replacement decision is gonna be similar to the FIFO. So, so I already mentioned that. Um, so, um, You know, so whereas FIFO basically just replaces whatever the frame pointer is pointing to directly. So you'll need to do these same tasks, but instead of just directly taking what the frame pointer is, you need to do a bit of a search, right? So um, for your clock page replacement, uh, you first need to go through and, and um, uh, you know, wh wherever the, the frame pointer is currently pointing to, check. If the use bit is zero, then you stop, and that's the frame you want to replace. 
if the use bid is not zero, you have to, you have to, you, um, that means it's one. That means you have to flip it to zero or flip it to false, whatever you're using to represent the use bit. Uh, and then check the next frame. So, so increment the frame pointer to the next one. Being careful to wrap your frame pointer around when you're doing the search, right? So again, you know, if you're not, if, if, if you haven't read about the, the clock page replacement, go read about it. You'll need to, to, to know how it works. But um, uh, so, so clock differs mostly from FIFO in that you first go through, find um, a frame whose use bit is zero, and then you stop and replace that frame. So that's, yeah, that's how the make replacement decision works. Right? Being careful to treat the buffer as a circular buffer, so to wrap back around if you have to, right? Um, and as our textbook talks about, you know, I mean, if all the use bits are one, I mean, you're still going to end up finding a, a use bit of zero. So you don't have to do like a for loop. You should really be doing a while loop that just keeps going until the, the, the use bit for the frame that you're pointing to is zero. Because what you're doing is, is you're flipping, you know, whenever you see a use bit of one, you flip it to zero and go to the next one. So if they were all one, they would all get flipped and you would come, you would wrap back around to the beginning um, and end up replacing the original frame, but after having flipped all the use bits from one back to zero. Okay, professor, I have one last question. Like uh, in the in the part two, where we are supposed to uh, initialize uh, all the use bits to one, huh? um, uh, how do we actually do that? Like, uh, is, do we have to? Uh, we do we have another way, like without uh, using a loop, to initialize all the. Uh, well, if, if you're dynamically allocating this, you probably need to have a loop. Yeah. So, um, okay. yeah. Oh, okay. So there's no other way like uh, we can um, initialize is to one when we're defining it. Yeah. So just do it, just do it uh, uh, by looping. Uh, yeah. So, for example, you know, we already looked at the uh, the the how the memory got initialized in the um, the the the, the um, in the, the, the paging system simulation, right? So, so there, in order to initialize all of memory to have empty frames, we just have a loop uh, and set them all to be empty frames. So, so yeah, you need, to, you need something similar somewhere for clock page replacement that initializes all the use bits to be zero. Um, Got it, bro. Um, although, well, yeah, I have to think about it. So, that, um, well, yeah. Actually, it probably doesn't matter because when you load a page, well, whenever you load a page, you have to set the use bit to one, okay? So that's something you have to do on your page hit. Um, so, so for FIFO, you don't do anything for page hit, but um, yeah. um, on the clock page replacement, if there's a page hit, you have to set the use bit to one for the page that was hit. Right. Um, but uh, the other thing is that uh, whenever the page gets loaded, um, you want to make certain that you're setting the use bit uh, to be one. So um, I have to say it, it, it might depend on how you implement it, but so yeah, yeah, you might want to initialize those all to initially one or zero, depending on how you're doing things. So, but they probably do need to be initialized. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. So yeah, it's already 12.15. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end this session. Um, we'll talk more about this assignment on five uh, on, on Thursday. Um, if people have questions, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later then. Thank you, folks. Have a good one.